Alrighty folks, more Chapter 7 problems. Here goes. You've heard of Iron Man. Well, his cousin is Zinc Man. Zinc Man has a rocket pack strapped to his suit. He starts from rest and accelerates straight upward from the ground. At a height of 16 meters, he has a speed of 5.00 meters per second. His mass, including his Zinc Man suit, is 136 kilograms. How many joules of energy have been done to Zinc Man by his racket, rocket pack. So here is little Zinc Man and he's standing on the ground looking all superhero y with his hands on his hips. Uh, we'll give him a little cape back there and he's, look, I don't know, he should have a helmet of some sort. And he then goes from here up into the air with his little rocket pack on his back and we want to know how much work has been done. Well, the work that has been done is going to be equal to the potential energy he has gained from his change in height plus any residual kinetic energy that Zinc Man has due to his speed. So the work done by his rocket pack is going to be his mass, his height, his acceleration of gravity, which is his change in potential energy, plus his change in kinetic energy, one-half mass and his velocity squared. So let's see if we can calculate the work that has been done by the rocket pack. So the mass of Zinc Man we know is he and his rocket pack is 136 kilograms. He has risen to 16 meters of height and the acceleration of gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. One half mass, 136 kilograms, and his velocity at that height is 5 meters per second squared. So let's find each one of those values. 136 times 16 times 9.8. So the change in potential energy, I get 21324.8 joules, and then change in kinetic, 5 squared times 136 divided by 2, I get 1700 joules. And we're going to add that to the change in potential energy. And when I add those two together, give myself a little room to write over here, um, I end up with 23024.8 joules, and we want to round that off to three sig figs. So we're going to go 23000 joules of uh, energy that were actually done by the rocket pack to lift Zinc Man. All right, next problem. Number 10, a gymnast is swinging around on a high bar. We will treat his waist as his center of mass, so there's his waist as a center of mass, and locate all of his mass mathematically at this point. We do this all the time. We call that the center of gravity, and we can pretend all the mass is at that point. At the top of this high bar, his waist is 1.1 meters above the bar, so this change in height is 1.10 meters. Um, and he's momentarily motionless. What is his speed at the bottom of his swing? When he goes, whoop, what is his swing? Well, all of the energy that he possesses up here is potential energy. When he goes and swings down, all of that potential energy will be converted to kinetic energy. So what change in height from here to there? Well, it's 1.1 meters from his waist to the bar, so the total change in height is going to be 2 times 1.10 meters, or 2.20 meters is going to be the total change in height. So what was potential energy at the top is going to turn into kinetic energy at the bottom. And the potential energy is going to be mass, height, acceleration of gravity, kinetic energy at the bottom is 1 half mass velocity squared. Nowhere in this problem do we hear anything about the mass of our gymnast, which is convenient because we're not given mass, and mass will fall out of our problem. 
We want to know the velocity at the bottom of his swing, so we're solving for v. So we're going to multiply both sides by 2, so 2 times height times acceleration of gravity will equal velocity squared to square root both sides. So velocity is going to be the square root of 2 times that change in height times the acceleration of gravity. So 2 times 2.20 meters times 9.8 meters per second squared. The velocity will be 2 times 2.2 times 9.8, square root all of that. The velocity at the bottom, I get 6.57 meters per second. Where do those units come from? Meters times meters will give me meters squared divided by second squared. All of that is under the square root, so meters per second. Next one. A snowboarder is traveling at 5.4 meters per second straight down at the top, top of the left side of a half pipe. If friction forces are ignored, sliding on ice and snow, how high can she jump above the rim on the right side of the half pipe? Okay, so let's take a look at what's going on. So on the left side, so we've got a left side and we've got a right side. So a snowboarder is traveling 5.4 meters straight down at the top of the left side of a half pipe. So we've got a left side over here, a half pipe kind of this kind of a shape, and she's got some sort of a velocity at this moment. And we want to know if she's got this velocity here when she gets to this point on the half pipe, how high is she going to be able to rise above the half pipe if we can ignore any frictional forces with the snow? And snow is a pretty friction-free environment. So here's the logic. The kinetic energy that she's going to have on the left is going to be equivalent to the potential energy that she is going to have on the right. And we're using this altitude, this height, as her the point at which we're doing our math Four. So we're going to have one half her mass velocity squared is going to be mass height acceleration of gravity. Again, her mass is going to fall out of the equation. This time we're solving for height. Height is going to be equal to one half velocity squared. To get rid of a g, we're going to solve divide both sides by acceleration of gravity. So one half her velocity. 5.4 meters per second quantity squared divided by 9.8 meters per second squared. So how high is she going to be able to travel? So let's see, 5.4 squared equals divided by 9.8 equals divided by 2 equals I end up with 1.49 meters. Let's take a look at where those units come from, I end up with meters squared per second squared divided by meters per second squared, which means invert and multiply, meters squared per second squared times second squared over meters. These cancel, I'll end up with meters, I end up with a height, so that is good. Let's do one more. A diver with a mass of 67 kilograms jumps from rest off of a three meter tall platform straight down into a swimming pool. So we have a diver. Here's our little diver. Um, here is a pool down below. Let's give it a little blue water because that's kind of fun. Um, three meter tall platform. So this is three meters high. Um, we know the mass of our diver is 67.0 kilograms and from rest. So this person has zero kinetic energy at the top. Neglecting any air resistance, she comes to rest 1.1 meters below the surface of the water. So below the surface of the water, 1.1 meters down, the velocity is going to be zero. What is the magnitude of the average force that the water exerts on her while bringing her to a stop? 
Okay, here is what's going on. What was potential energy, up here she has some sort of potential energy. The potential energy she had up here is converted at this point to work that is done against her to slow her in the pool. So the potential energy that she has at the top is transformed into work that is done on her by the water in order to make her stop. So potential energy is going to be mass, height, acceleration of gravity. Work done on her by the water is going to be the force of the water and the distance over which that force is actually exerted. So we know the distance, we're looking for force. So force, in this case, is going to be equal to mass, height, acceleration of gravity, divided by the distance under water. Her mass is 67.0 kilograms. She started out 3 meters above the pool, 9.8 meters per second squared. All of this on top gives her potential energy. The force to slow her was exerted over 1.10 meters. And when we do the math, 67 times 3 times 9.8 divided by 1.1, and I end up with a force of 1790 Newtons of force were done against her by the water in the pool. Again, let's take a look at the units and where they come from. This meter will cancel that one. I end up with a kilogram times a meter divided by a second squared, and all of those are Newtons. All right, that will do for this time. See you later.